Hello YouTube and welcome to a new series of videos recorded in Train Simulator which will be made alongside the route learning series that I've been making. In this series each video should be between 5 and 15 minutes long and they'll focus on one train each. We'll look at the background and history of each train along with the technical specifications before looking around the cab and then having a quick look at the driving techniques which are pertinent to that particular train. On today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Class 03 shunter. The Class 03 is an 060 diesel mechanical shunter. It was built at BR Swindon and Doncaster Works between 1957 and 1961, and a total of 230 of them were produced. The Class 03 was built for light duties such as shunting in locomotive and carriage sheds, where more powerful locomotives were not needed. Originally, the Class 03s were deployed where their attributes of short wheelbase and light weight enabled them to operate where other shunters could not. For example, on the line to Ipswich docks, bridge weight restrictions prevented the much more common Class 08 shunters from operating. Another common use for the Class 03s was as station pilots, usually coupled to a shunter's truck to ensure operation of the signalling track circuits, which did not always register the passage of the short Class 03. From 1968 the Class 03s started to be withdrawn due to a reduced demand for shunting locomotives, though some survived well on into the 21st century. Until 1993 the Isle of Wight Railway had two Class 03 shunters which were painted in Network South East livery. One of the Isle of Wight Class 03 shunters was transferred to Wagon, which was a train operating company known as West Anglia Great Northern, and it was transferred to them in 1998 for use at Hornsey EMU depot on the East Coast Main Line in London. This is now the last Class 03 to still be in operation on the UK rail network and is now owned by Govia Thameslink Railway. A total of 55 Class 03s were preserved, with the rest being scrapped. The Class 03 in Train Simulator can be found on two routes, each with a different livery. The West Somerset Railway in BR Green livery, and at Doncaster Works, which is based in the 1980s in BR Blue livery. The Class 03 is 26 feet long, 8 feet 6 inches wide and 12 feet 2 inches high. The locomotive weighs 30.2 tonnes and has a fuel capacity of 510 gallons, which is 2,300 litres. The wheel diameter is 3 feet 7 inches, with a minimum curve radius of 2 chains. The engine in the Class 03 is a Gardner 8-cylinder 4-stroke 8L3, which gives a maximum power output of 204 horsepower. This is connected to a 5-speed gearbox, and when driving the Class 03, you have to manually operate the gears, as I will demonstrate in a minute. The maximum tractive effort is 15,650 pounds of force, with a maximum speed of 28.5 miles per hour. The braking system uses vacuum braking, though some examples were fitted with both air and vacuum brakes. Now that we have covered both the history and the technical specifications for the Class 03, let's take a look inside the cab. So here we are in the cab of the Class 03 shunter at Minehead on the West Somerset Railway. In fact the first shot that you saw in this video was recorded with the Class 03 departing from Minehead. And so just to go through the controls here from left to right, on the left down here we have the gear lever which goes from neutral to 5 as you can see. Next to that on the right we have the air brake lever. Just above that we have where it says pull engine to stop, that's the engine stop valve. And then over here we have the throttle and finally the reversing handle which I'm now going to put into forward ready for moving soon. The next lever in the middle is the sanding lever which you would use to put sand on the track to help the train get grip. And then the same controls are duplicated on the right hand side of the cab. Now with the controls in the middle of the cab here, at the bottom in the middle we have the um, fuel tank gauge which is measured in gallons and you can see how much fuel is in the tank. 
and now up here we have several gauges most of which work but some of them aren't really important for driving the train and some of them I'm not actually entirely sure what they do so as you can see we have oil pressure for example which isn't entirely important for this and the gearbox air pressure in the middle at the top where it says vacuum gauge that is the vacuum brake um, gauges so that's showing you how hard the brakes are applied below that we have the tachometer which is showing you how fast the engine is moving in revs and that is useful for when we're changing gear then to the far right which is actually quite difficult to see in this train we have the speedometer which as you can see can go forward or backwards to show you which direction you are traveling in and then at the top we have the water temperature gauge which you can see there and then over here where it says middle front marker lights, the middle switch is the headlight switch, which you would use obviously for driving along. And then just to have a bit more of a look around the cab. At the rear here, we have a wheel, which is actually the handbrake, which you would turn to put the brakes on manually. Um, of course, these aren't operated by air, the handbrake. It's simply you're turning the wheel to clamp the, the brake blocks onto the wheels themselves and also as you can see in the cab here we have a rear window so to drive this train you can drive either direction from this one cab uh, although you can't actually see the cab controls or any of the instrument gauges when driving from this direction so in a moment we'll take a look just quickly at how to drive the train and then that will be the conclusion of this first train guide video so we are now ready to depart from Minehead and just to point out just before we move you can see in front of us a thing here that says maximum speed and it shows you the maximum speed for each gear on the loco so to change from first gear to second gear the maximum speed you should be doing is three and three quarter miles per hour which is actually very difficult to judge on this train uh, so I'll generally try and aim to be doing around three miles per hour when I change gear and then for second gear six and a half miles per hour third gear nine and three quarter miles per hour fourth gear 15 and a quarter miles per hour and finally the fifth gear's maximum speed is 28 and a half miles per hour so now it's time to move i'm going to put the gear into the first gear and apply just a small amount of power to get us moving you can see the speedometer is just slowly climbing there and in a moment, I'm now going to shut off the power. You probably just noticed that the train was shaking slightly, which is indicating that I need to change gear as it can't accelerate above that speed because of the gear setting that I'm in. So now accelerate slightly more. And you can see the train is shaking again, which is a good indicator that we need to change the gear. So we'll now go up to gear three. And once again, power up. Once we're in gear 3 we can power up slightly more as it takes a bit longer to get to the next speed where we need to change gear. So I'll now power down again and you can see just there we need to change gear and the tachometer has fallen. So what you have to do to change gear is you have to reduce the power to idle, wait till the tachometer needle has fallen as far as it will go and then increase the power. And you can see the tachometer now in the middle there increasing once again. I've taken the tachometer needle as far as I can. If I was to apply any more power, it would hit the red line. As it happens, we're on maximum power now anyway. But you shouldn't take the tachometer up to the red. If you do, that means you are over revving the train. And so now, if I wanted to change to the next gear, just to demonstrate once again, though we don't really need to, I will just shut off the power, watch the tachometer needle fall. And now that it's fallen to its lowest setting, I will go into the next gear and apply power once again. I'm not sure if it's the case with this train, but certainly if you were using, for example, the Class 101 DMU, which has gears, if you wanted to coast along, you should always coast in the highest gear setting. And now just to demonstrate stopping, so I've shut off the power. I'm leaving it in gear 5 for now, and I'm just going to apply the brakes a bit. And you can see that on the brake gauges the needles have fallen, which indicates that the brakes are now on and we are coming slowly to a stop. The harder I apply the brakes, the more the needles fall. 
And once I've done that, I believe that's pretty much everything that I need to demonstrate on this train. So thank you very, very much for watching this video, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do give me some feedback to let me know what you think. If you liked this video, then I really would like to know, as it's my first video of this type. So I'm very interested in hearing people's constructive feedback about whether you like it or how I could improve this sort of video. Again, thanks for watching.